across the street to around the world, across the street to around the world. God's love is for everybody, everyone around the world. Me and you and all God's children and across the street to around the world, across the street to around the world. It's me, Mrs. B. I've been on vacation over the holidays, and I am so excited to gather with you for the first time in 2021. Today, we're going to hear the story of Follow Me. Jesus is no longer a baby. He's a man calling others to be his disciples, to be his followers. But before we get ahead of ourselves, as always, I want to make sure that you have your faith formation bag with your notebook and your All of Us book and get out something to color with, like your markers or crayons. And if you have to press pause to do that, go ahead. I'll wait for you right here. And if you don't have your bag, just get something to draw with and a paper and we'll make it work. Okay, here we go. As our warm up or icebreaker today, I want us to turn to our primary leaflets. Remember what those look like, your primary leaflets. And I want you to go to session seven. So hunt through those till you find session seven. It will say, follow me at the top. This one right here. And then turn until you get to page three. And it says, I am very unique. There's a nice teddy bear. So you get the joke, I am very unique. I am very unique. And I'm going to give you some directions. So you're going to need to have some different colors. So you have your crayons or markers ready. And we're going to find out first about our families. So if you have a sister and a brother, color the teddy bear's tummy red. Now, if you ever need longer to do that than what I'm giving you, you can always press pause. But color the teddy bear's tummy red. But if you only have a sister, color the tummy yellow. If you only have a brother, color the tummy green. And if you're the only child, no brothers or sisters, color the tummy blue. So red if you have a sister and a brother. Yellow if you have only a sister green if you have only a brother, and blue if you are the only child in your family. All right. Now, do you have any pets? If you have a dog, color the bear's arms yellow. If you have a cat, color the legs green. If you have a different kind of animal, different kind of pet, Color the arms and or legs blue. And if you don't have a pet, color the arms and legs red. So that's some complicated. See, what kind of pets do you have? Dog, color the arms yellow. Cat, color the legs green. A different kind of pet, color the arms or legs, whatever's left over, blue. And if you don't have a pet, color the arms and legs red. So already you can tell we're all going to have different colors on our bears. Now, which do you like to do more, read or draw? If you'd like to read books more, color the bear's face blue. If you'd like to draw more, color the face red. And if you'd like to do both, I guess use a little blue and a little red. So we're almost done with our animals. 
our bear, our very unique bear. If you have left anything uncolored, like the ears or the nose, use whatever color you'd like. I sure wish I could see all the colors on yours and see how different they are, how much the same they are. This is how mine turned out. I did this for my birth family. I had two sisters and a brother, and we had a dog growing up. And I like to write and read, so I did I did that for my color. All right, if you're not finished, you can do that later. We're gonna move on and do our prayer time. And this time we're gonna look in our Spotlight magazine and go to page seven. If you don't have your magazine, that's okay. It says, listen on the top. And these are different kinds of listening prayers. And we're gonna do the breath prayer. Now the breath prayer is a kind of listening prayer and it's where we say some words as we go in and out, as we're breathing in and out, and it helps us focus on our relaxing our bodies and kind of clearing our minds as we focus on our breathing. And you can even get in a more comfortable position. Some people actually like to lie down while they're doing this or you can get a comfy pillow behind you on the couch. So get really comfortable, and we're going to do this together. And on page seven, it shows you some different phrases that you might use. I'm just going to choose one for today, and we're going to use, Lord Jesus, be with me. So as you inhale or breathe in through your nose, we're going to say, Lord Jesus. And as we exhale or breathe out through our mouth, will say, be with us. Now you can say that silently in your head or you can actually say it out loud. So I'm gonna start us off, just relax and follow me. There's no right or wrong. If you lose your place, just jump back in and um, we'll try to see if we can do this together. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, be with me. 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 One last time. Lord Jesus, be with me. Now that's a prayer that you could do anytime. You could do it for much longer. When you're doing it silently, no one else knows you're really doing it because you're just breathing. And I find it especially nice when it's a time that I'm feeling nervous or anxious. And just by focusing on my breath and saying some words that remind me that God is with me, I find that I feel a lot better. So I hope that's a prayer you might use in your future. So now we're going to turn to our Bible verse. It's this time it's from the book of Philippians. It's in our New Testament, Philippians. It's a letter to the church in Philippi. The people were called Philippians. Chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. And again, you'll find that on the last page of your primary leaflets. I've moved mine to be in the front. And it's down here at the bottom this time, in this yellow, orangey yellow square. And we're going to just do just the first verse today. We're going to learn it little by little, because that's a lot of words there. So the very first verse, let's say with us, say with us together. Always be glad because of the Lord. I will say it again, be glad. Let's do that again. Always be glad because of the Lord. I will say it again, be glad. Wow, okay. Now as a way to help us remember that a little bit, I want you to, in your primary leaflets, we're already there, but this time I want you to go to session six. And it looks like this at the top. It says, look who's coming got the water drops on it, and 
you're going to go to the page that says be glad. He has this very simple dot to dot, but it's something that kind of kind of help us remember the words. So let's see if I can hold this up and draw at the same time. We're going to start at the star that's above this little curly haired girl. Okay. Always be glad because of the Lord. Oh, look what we drew, an umbrella. Okay, I'm going to darken this in so you can see it. This was already there. And then go down to this little star by the hand of a little boy, and you'll, we'll do this together. I will be, oh, did I do that right? I will, oh, I said it wrong. I will, sorry about that, say it again, be glad. So I wasn't following very well. Always be glad because of the Lord. I will say it again, be glad. So, is it easy to always be glad? Sometimes, sometimes not. Now these children are under umbrellas. Are you glad when it's raining? Sometimes, sometimes not. Why does the verse tell us to be glad? It says, be glad because of the Lord. Because of the Lord, I wonder what that means. Maybe because the Lord, God, is always with us, always loves us, always promises to take care of us. You could fill in the blanks. And God's being with us or loving us or taking care of us never changes. Whether it's a sunny day or a rainy day, I always have a reason to be glad. Something to think about. Let's say it one last time. Always be glad because of the Lord. I say it again, be glad. Now it's time to connect to our story. So of course we pull out, let's see where did I put it? Oh, here it is, our All of Us book. And we're skipping ahead now. So we're at page 114, chapter 20. It says, follow me. And as always, you can read along or listen as I read these pages, or you can turn to the next page and color the pictures in while you listen, which I've already done. You can see I've put some colors on my page. So let's do that together now. As Jesus passed along the Galilee Sea, he saw two brothers, Simon and Andrew, throwing fish nets into the sea, for they were fishermen. Come follow me, he said, and I'll show you how to fish for people. Right away, they left their nets and followed him. After going a little farther, he saw James and John, Zebedee's sons, in their boat repairing the fishing nets. At that very moment, he called them, and they followed him, leaving their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired workers. Sometime later, Jesus went out again beside the lake. A whole crowd surrounded him, and he began to teach them. And as he continued along, he saw Levi, Alphaeus' son, sitting at a kiosk for collecting taxes. Jesus said to him, Follow me. Levi got up and followed him. Jesus sat down to eat at Levi's house. Many tax collectors and sinners were eating with Jesus and his disciples. Indeed, many of them had become his followers. When some of the legal experts from among the Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, Why? Why is he eating with the sinners and tax collectors? When Jesus heard it, he said to them, Healthy people don't need a doctor, but sick people do. I didn't come to call righteous people, but sinners. Then Jesus left that place and went up on a mountain. He continued to call people to follow him. He chose 12 disciples, Simon Peter, James and John, Andrew, Philip, 
Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, Thaddeus, Simon, and Judas, who would eventually betray Jesus. He gave the disciples power to preach and heal. Wow. Jesus calling disciples, finding people that would be his followers. He must have known he needed to have others to help him on his, in his ministry. I wonder, let's see, I wonder, it seems like, hmm, I wonder why Jesus was calling fishermen and tax collectors to be his followers. Well, it may have been those who, upon whom he happened upon, but it seems like he was asking just ordinary people, people who were out in the community doing their jobs. And he even called people who weren't well-liked or looked well upon, like the tax collectors. Many people did not like them because they cheated them with the money for the taxes. And I wonder why people so easily just wanted to follow Jesus. I imagine there was something very compelling about Jesus, something that, about him that just made people want to be around him. Some people call that charisma, which really comes from the word of spirit. So he had a spirit about him that attracted people. There's an image here on this page where he's sitting around the table with all his disciples. I wonder what it was like to sit at that table. I wonder what they talked about. Do you think Jesus calls people today? I wonder how he does that. I probably wouldn't imagine that he's calling people out of fishing boats too often, but maybe out of the workplaces for wherever people are working, where they have their careers and their passions. I think a lot of people feel called to do the work that they do, and maybe that call is coming from Jesus. I wonder who Jesus would eat with in our community. In the Bible story, it was Levi and other tax collectors and sinners, sinners meaning people who have separated themselves from God due to their choices or actions. I think Jesus was drawn to calling people or, or or living with people, eating with people who are on the fringes of society, where those people who maybe weren't as well accepted by others. So who would that be today? Might it be people who've been in jail, who have committed crimes and now are trying to fit back into society? Might it be the poor, um, the immigrant, people of color? You could think about that. Who would Jesus eat with? And then maybe... That tells us something about who we should be eating with. I wonder how you can follow Jesus. I'm going to leave you to think about that question. How might you follow Jesus? And how might you hear what God's or Jesus is calling you to do? I would like you to get a plain piece of paper and draw a table, a rectangle, in the middle of the paper. And then, like in this picture, draw, you can draw people around the table. Or if you like to cut and paste, you could go online and Google images of people and cut them out and glue them on your page. Or if you have a lot of magazines around your house, you could look for different people, cut them out, arrange them around the table, put some food on the table. I'll leave you to do that. If you want to do that now, you can press pause. Or if you'd like to wait and do that after our time together is over, you may do that as well. I would sure like to see your table when it's done. You can take a picture of it and email it to me or text it to me. That would be great. I would love to see your images. Every table would look different. But what amazing tables those will be. So let us pray our closing prayer. Jesus, thank you for calling us to walk with you Guide our feet so that we walk in your way of peace. Amen. And we're going to close with another new song, so we'll see how well I do with my motions. You know, Mrs. Mrs. B, I don't do so well sometimes. This one's called Jesus Be the Center. Let's go. <laughs> for G. 
time.